For more on this, I'm joined by Andrei Dobriensky, Director of Communications and Media at the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America. Uh, welcome back. What's at risk if Ukraine does not get this funding? We've heard it time and again from everybody coming over from overseas explaining just the big risk. David Cameron uh, is here. We have the Speaker of Ukraine's Parliament, the, the President's Chief of Staff from Ukraine, Ukraine's Defense Minister. All these people are here in, in the United States, in Washington, explaining that we can't go through another winter where we had to defend so many attacks on Ukraine's energy stations, on Ukraine's heating supplies. But the people in Ukraine are, are seriously worried. Every conversation I'm having with journalists in Ukraine, because I'm on TV almost every day this week in Ukraine, they are worried personally about their children, wherever they may be in Ukraine, because they don't want to survive another winter like they had last year, where they didn't know which block had power for which day of the week. It was, it, it was incredible to live through last year, and that's what Ukraine is defending against right now. Meanwhile, we have politicians in Washington arguing about UFO policies instead of getting through what we actually need to do, which is help Ukraine now. Why do you think those risks and the threat is not resonating with Republicans in the House and Senate? Where, where is the line not getting crossed? Well, I can tell you personally that I'm assured that the vast majority of congressmen and senators want to support aid to Ukraine, no matter which party they're from. Obviously, as you mentioned at the top of this, we have a number of people who voted against helping Ukraine, and that's never going to you know, be an easy dinner conversation for any of them if they are visiting Ukraine again, looking into the eyes of the people and saying that I needed to vote against something because of my political considerations. Uh, but we do know that this bill will be passed because the vast majority want to support Ukraine, want to support border security, want to support Israel. All of this is in this bill, but that makes it much more complicated to get, the, you know, past the goal line. I will, I do think that we are going to pass it with the next couple of weeks, but I can't guarantee people in Ukraine that that's going to happen before the end of the year. I do thank uh, Senator John Tester for very forcefully explaining to the press that he's willing to work through Christmas uh, to make sure this happens. But why they're blocking it? It's it's purely political considerations. And when you're talking about people's lives on the line, that's not going to be an easy conversation for any of these people who voted against it. Yeah, compromise will be necessary. I want to talk to you about President Putin. He will run for re-election in 2024. I'm guessing you are not at all surprised by this, but what are the implications of it? It just means same old, same old uh, uh, internationally for the uh, people of that country. That's not uh, going to be any relief for them. We know that they live under horrifying conditions. We heard uh, you, you mentioned the fact that um, uh, this country is willing to put up with a lot of uh, a, a Vietnam length war against Ukraine. That's just stealing resources from the people of Russia. Uh, those people, uh, you know, their schools aren't being funded. Their roads aren't being funded. They live in constant uh, uh, freezing conditions during the winter because their central the heating isn't supplied for most of the villages outside of Russia and uh, Moscow and St. Petersburg. So uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is, how long do the Russian people put up with all of their opposition leaders and other people being arrested and them not leading a life on the level of other countries? Uh, that's for Russians to decide because they, they can't be happy about the fact that this man has sent so many of their people to be killed in Ukraine, over 200,000 or 250,000 by most international estimates. Will anyone challenge him, Andre? He has systematically eliminated people who could challenge him. So they are either living in exile, uh, in fear of being poisoned, obviously. They are either completely executed now. And they even get, go to the extent of looking at local level leaders so that they can never grow up to be national level leaders. Uh, so uh, when we're talking about the fact that uh, eight years ago I got called into a TV studio because the main opposition leader, Boris Nemtsov, was gunned down right outside the Kremlin doors. Uh, that's like shooting somebody right on Lafayette Avenue in front of uh, the White House, and that person being the main opposition candidate to the to the president. I think that sends a sent a clear message then and remains to this day that anybody who wash, wishes to challenge the president uh, in a democratic way is going to be eliminated. I think it's going to have to be a wholesale change of the country as a whole. And the other thing, and we'll leave it on this uh, less than a minute left, the election will be the first time that a region of occupied Ukraine will participate. What do you see happening? happening here? 
Well, if it's anything like the parliamentary elections Russia has had, which was uh, twice already since it occupied Crimea and other occupied territories in Ukraine, uh, th they will immediately be at risk for further international sanctions. Uh, this is just another way of crossing uh, crossing the, uh, a line in terms of international relations that you just don't do. Um, hopefully, that means that Russia can finally be kicked off of numerous other uh, uh, international positions that it still holds. Uh, you know, it's it's shocking that they were that uh, uh, the foreign minister of Russia was allowed to speak at the OSCE con conference. It's shocking that Russia still gets to chair the UN Security Conference. Never in history has anything like this happened, where a country that's uh, been allowed to, to, to a seat at the table after breaking so much international law, that I think at some point the international community, with Ukraine as the lead, uh, Ukraine has turned to the global south and said, listen, I hear that you are not at the table, and I think it's time that we change the entire system because we see the way that Russia is allowed at the table does not help, which is why they've been talking to countries like South Africa. They've been talking to countries in South America. They've been talking to countries in the Middle East and South Asia. Now is the time, with Russia breaking so many laws, that countries like India, countries like Brazil, countries like Argentina get a seat at the international table and aren't, uh, aren't relegated to second place because the, the first-run countries like Russia have clearly broken the system altogether. Andrei Dobriansky will have to leave it there, sir. Thank you, as always.